China has done it again. They just released an open source model that is better than ChatGPT-01, which is the latest and greatest from OpenAI. In this video, I'm gonna show you how it works, how you can run it locally on your own computer. Yes, you can actually run it on your computer and also how you can get access online to it right now. Let's jump right in. All right, so this is DeepSeek R1. And like I mentioned earlier, this is on par with OpenAI 01. This is a fully open source model. That means you can download this and run it locally on your own computer, or you can run it on your own servers. That is a very, very big deal. You can also run it on their website and you can use their API, which I'm gonna show you in this video is significantly cheaper than 01, like almost 100 times cheaper than 01 with the same performance. Pretty crazy stuff. So let's see the comparison here. So uh, you can see on the coding benchmarks. So on the math benchmarks, you can see that 4.0 is about a 74. They're model is a 94.5. 01 Mini is about a 90. Their model is a 94.5. So obviously way, way better. In coding, 01 Mini gets an 1820. They get a 1633. So 01 Mini is a little bit better at coding according to this. And if we come down here a little bit more, they go into the technical highlights and you can see that their pricing is $0.14 per million input tokens. And I'm going to show you how much cheaper that is from OpenAI in a second here. So some other math comparisons here. So you can see in the math category, 01 here. So 01 Mini and 01. Uh, you can see that DeepSeek is actually scoring higher in the math category than every single model it tested against, including 01 Pro, which is 200 bucks a month, by the way. DeepSeek is 100% free right now on their website. So pretty big deal there. It also actually beat it in a lot of the English scores. One of the coding scores and obviously in the Chinese scores as well. So pretty cool stuff there. And um, we talked about the math comparisons. So one, one interesting thing I thought here, so this is Dr. Jim Fan on X, and one interesting thing he said is that we're living in a timeline where a non-US company is keeping with the original mission of OpenAI. So if you don't know this, the reason it's called OpenAI, and that's the people who own ChatGPT, OpenAI, the reason it's called OpenAI is because it was originally an open source AI platform. Their whole goal was to create open source AI. They moved away from that goal, made it closed source, which is why Elon had a falling out with them. There's a whole story behind that. I might make a video on that one day. Subscribe if you want to see that and drop a comment if you want to see that as well. That'll let me know that people want to see that as well. Uh, but basically, yeah, this Chinese company is doing that. They're creating open source AI with the original mission that OpenAI had. So pretty interesting to see that comparison here. So another cool thing I saw here, so uh, Matthew Berman here on X saying that it has, DeepSeek has the most human-like internal monologue I've ever seen. And if you break through this, so a very similar to 01, and I'm going to show you at the end of this video, by the way, how to use it. Uh, and I'm going to compare it directly with chat. GPT, we're going to do a comparison on the both, and that's ChatGPT's 01, their best model. But it does a lot of what 01 does here with this thinking strategy. So it, 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 you ask it a question, you ask it to do a task, and it'll think about it. So it thought for 30 seconds here, and it goes through this process like a human would. Okay, let's try to figure out where the marble is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, hmm, let's break it down step by step. And then it starts to think about this. When you put a marble in a glass cup normally, the marble's just sitting at the bottom, right? So this is almost like, it's almost like it's having a conversation with itself. And if, if you see through this entire conversation, it's basically talking to itself, having a conversation and coming up with rational answers and conclusions based on the conversation it's having with itself. Really mind-blowing stuff here, that we have computers basically talking to themselves and AI basically having an internal discussion. Pretty crazy stuff. So I told you I was gonna show you how much cheaper this is. So for comparison, 01 right now is $15 per 1 million input tokens. DeepSeek R1 APIs is 0.14. For 1 million tokens. So that makes it, if my math is correct here, 100 times cheaper than 01. Actually, a little bit more than 100 times cheaper because 100 times would be 0.14, I'm sorry, 0.15, not 0.14. So it's less than 100 times cheaper than 01. And it is, as I showed you earlier with those benchmarks, very, very comparable. And I've done some tests myself and it is very, very good and very comparable. So I can see this being the number one API in use moving forward here. So I know Gemini has been the number one because it's so cheap as well. But if R1 is this cheap and this good, it's going to blow Gemini and everything else out of the water and people are just going to use this API. So really big deal here. So I, I also told you that you could run this locally on your computer. So I'm going to show you a few examples of that. So this guy here, he's actually running it on seven M4 Mac Pro minis. You can see the whole stack here and one M4 MacBook Pro. So, you know, it's almost 500 gigabytes of memory here, uh, but he's, and he's running it here. But this is how I would say you'd have to run it. Like if you're going to create a, you know, an at-home server to run this, you'd, you're going to need a stack like this if you want to run it extremely fast, right? If you want this model to work in an instant and work extremely fast, you're probably gonna need something like this, especially if you're gonna have it doing a ton of different tasks, right? If you're gonna have it working nonstop at your home, you're gonna need basically 500 gigabytes of memory to do that. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can do this a lot cheaper with other systems. So this guy is running it on two M2 Ultras. So 
Still a pretty big setup, right? 2M2 Ultras is a pretty robust setup here, and it's actually working pretty good. So you can see here how, how so he asks it a question, and so it starts thinking, and it's and you can see it's coming through this process. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out whether a straight or a flush is better in Texas Hold'em. I remember that both are types of poker hands, whatever, right? So it's, it's answering this question, and it's doing it relatively fast. And you can see the 2M2 Ultras here in use. You can see the RAM usage. So it's using pretty much all the RAM here and all the RAM here as well, which is a lot of memory in tandem here that it's using. So obviously these are two very very powerful computers that he's mixing together here, but you don't need to do seven like this guy's doing, right? And this is just gonna run a little slower. Now, this guy is actually running it locally on his iPhone 16, okay? So not with seven Macs, not with two Macs, with one iPhone, he's running it. Now, this is the this is a much smaller version of the model. So this is a 1.5 billion parameter version of the model. So it's a lot smaller, but if you don't need to do super complex tasks, this is gonna work just fine for you. So it's distilled to a Quen 1.5 billion uh, parameter model, and it's easily running on iPhone 16 with MLX Swift. And you can see how well it works. I mean, it's, it's answering this question even faster than the two M2s were running it. So really, really cool stuff here. He's running it locally on his iPhone. This doesn't even have to be connected to the internet, by the way, because once you have it downloaded to your iPhone, you don't even need to be online. You could be in the mountain somewhere and having AI answer questions for you. Really, really cool stuff directly on your iPhone. So don't tell me you can't run this locally on your PC, on your phone. You can definitely run this locally. You're just going to need a workaround. So um, pretty cool stuff here. So another cool thing I saw here on X, the way it works is this reinforcement learning model. So in other words, the way that they're training these models to get better and better is this reinforcement learning. So this challenges the prior belief that replicating OpenAI's O1 reasoning models requires extensive COT data. And it turns out you just need to give it the right incentive. So in other words, Words, this is using a reinforcement model to learn, right? So it's saying R10 naturally emerged with numerous powerful and interesting reasoning behaviors using this reinforcement learning. So this reinforcement learning could be used to get to AGI in the future, right? If they use this process to continue this reinforcement learning, it's going to rapidly increase how good these LLMs are, how good these AI processors are, right? These AI systems, I should say, are. So pretty, pretty cool stuff there. Now, another thing I wanted to show you, this is um, somebody asked R1 to... To, to show it visually, like how the Pythagorean theorem works. And this is what it came up with. So pretty cool stuff that it would do this in one shot. So obviously it's using some kind of JavaScript or something, pretty cool breakdown of the Pythagorean theorem. And it seems pretty accurate also. So pretty cool stuff there. So this guy is actually showing what a comparison between O1 Pro and DeepSeq R1 is. So he asked it to implement a rotating triangle with a red ball in it. And you can see that this is O1 on the left hand. This is O1 Pro, by the way, 200 bucks a month, like I showed you, $15 for 1 million tokens. And it didn't even get it right. It's got the, the ball on the outside and it's not even rotating in here. Look at what O1 did here. It did it perfectly. So pretty cool stuff. And so the last thing I wanted to show you here before we get into testing the model is that it does have some censorship. So this is out of China, right? So we know it's out of China. And so this guy asked, asked it, tell me about Taiwan's status as an independent country. And it says Taiwan has always been an inalienable part of China's territory. I don't want to get too political into the whole China Taiwan thing, but basically China wants Taiwan has been trying to take it for a long time. And Taiwan has been basically, you know, an independent country for a very long time. So um, they're basically trying to take that territory. So seeing this baked into a Chinese model doesn't surprise me and something I wanted to show you guys. Now, let's jump into the comparison here. So first, I'm going to show you what ChatGPT looks like. So I'm using O1 here. So this is like the advanced reasoning model, the one we're comparing it to right now. And this is not the mini model. This is like their full O1 model, right? They're basically the best model they have available right now. I asked it a simple question. What is the best business to start in a post-AI world in 2025? Keep in mind what is already built and the most to compete with. Whatever we build needs to be either AI proof or AI native. So it thought about this for four seconds and it, it basically created a framework for both AI resistant, right? So, you know, businesses that can resist AI coming in the future and then AI native businesses, right? So I'm either embracing AI or I'm shielding myself from it for these business ideas. So for the AI resistant ideas, uh, it came up with um, a bunch and these are businesses that are difficult to replace uh, with AI, hyperlocal personalized services, it explains why it's AI resistant. It gives some examples, emotional community oriented experiences, high touch consulting and advisory. Uh, and then, so it only gave us three, right? And then it jumped into some of the AI native business ideas. So specialized AI applications for niche industries, gave some examples of that, obviously. Key considerations, AI security, compliance and trust, AI compliance platforms. Uh, I thought this was actually pretty good. ML ops and security, bias detection and mitigation. Again, 
pretty cool stuff. And then synthetic data and, and data curation, synthetic medical data sets, synthetic scene generation for robotics, et cetera. And it actually gave a, a last example here, human in the loop, AI services, specialty data labeling, AI results, blah, blah, blah. So it did a pretty good job. Now it also came into some areas of white space and strategic moats, right? So like don't necessarily fall into those two. And then it gave it some actionable steps to get started with some concluding thoughts. So I thought it did a pretty good job. So I basically asked DeepSeek the same question. And if you want to use DeepSeek, you literally just go to deepseek.com. You start a new chat. You definitely, I think you have to create an account. And then you just click on this deep think down here to use their R1 model. And I asked it the same question, exact same question. It thought for 19 seconds and you can see the thinking process, right? Kind of what I was showing you earlier, how it's basically having a conversation with itself, right? Okay. So the user wants to know the best businesses to start in a post AI world. They mentioned considering existing and competitive competition modes, right? So they go through this thinking process and they did a lot of the same thing. So, so putting this all together, potential business ideas might include, and then it gets through, through some ideas here, AI augmented creative studios, hyper-personalized wealth, uh, health and wellness programs, ethical AI consulting, AI driven sustainability options. So it actually came up with some different ideas here than ChatGPT did. And then it did the same kind of breakdown, right? So it gave us AI native businesses. So businesses that are going to embrace AI, hyper-personalized AI agents. These are actually a lot different than what, what ChatGPT did for us, right? So hyper-personalized AI agents. I thought this was really, really good. This is actually great. I mean, you can do so much with AI agents right now. And by the way, I have a video I just posted on that. Definitely check it out. I break down how to create AI agents. And by the way, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel, like the video as well. That really does help me out and, and leave a comment based on what you think about this whole world. But I, I bring you tons of content like this. So if you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe. So some of the other ideas were decentralized AI infrastructure. And, and what's cool about this, it gives you the idea, it gives you the moat, and then it gives you an example. It doesn't give the example for all of these, uh, but it gives you the idea in the moat, which I think is important. AI-driven sustainability optimization, AI or synthetic data marketplaces, and then the AI proof businesses like ethical AI auditing, which I thought was interesting, hybrid creative, experiential retail, high touch uh, care services, and then it also gave some moats to secure against competition, which I thought were kind of interesting and some critical considerations. So I would say that both of them did a very good job, but there's no way that I'm gonna pay ChatGPT this extra 20 bucks a month or this extra 100X for the tokens when DeepSeek is doing, I think, as good of a job, right? In, in answering these types of questions and providing this type of thinking, rational feedback for us. So very, very cool stuff. Uh, I'm very excited to see the future of open source AI. So again, like this video if you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you you want to see more content like this and definitely drop a comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say.